everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I've got another The Great Module Sew Along video for you today. So it's time to start sharing makes. Yay! <laughs> Some people have definitely already been doing that on Instagram. It's so very exciting um, to see everyone's modules slowly coming together. So definitely check out the hashtag and I'll put it across the screen, The Great Module Sew Along. Even if you're not participating, there's some really cool stuff that people are doing. Um, there's just a lot of inspiration there that I would highly recommend you go and have a look at on Instagram. Okay, for today, so since I'm doing three separate modules, um, my plan was to do this Tuesday, next Tuesday, and the following Tuesday as the three topper videos. Um, so I thought just for ease, I would do module one toppers today, next week module two, and then the following week module three toppers, talk you through those. Um, then the next two weeks were both scheduled to be bottoms weeks, so I was just going to do bottom one for each of the three modules, and then the following week bottom number two for the each of the three modules and then the next week would be all three toppers um, and then the big reveal. I think that comes out right. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing some advanced filming today. Um, we are going to be heading on vacation here somewhat soon so I um, wanted to try and get a backlog on videos all the way up so that I didn't have to worry about that as I start getting ready for the trip. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> okay, also before I get started, I want to remind you, we have three separate coupon codes down below. The first one is the 20% off Goheen Designs, their Huxley bag, which is the sew along that I'll be starting on Sunday. So if you want to sew along with that, definitely um, you want to use that. I mean, 20% off the, the pattern, why not? It's a fantastic bag. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to film that first video. <laughs> And show you guys that. Um, and then the second one is So Altered Style has offered 20% off. I can't remember the coupon code off my top of my head, but it's all in the description box below off all three of their patterns, which are all three fantastic wardrobe builders. And then Love Notions has given us a 20% off um, coupon um, through the um, module, through the whole challenge is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and their coupon code is also down below fantastic wardrobe builders. In fact, I am, um, quite a few of their patterns are popping up into my modules as we're going along. Okay, so let's get started. So my first module, I had decided to go very monochromatic with um, my light, lightest neutral, which is kind of a creamy white, technically more of an oyster white, but we're going with kind of an ivory color. Um, because I, I've said this before, but I really want these three modules to kind of be mostly year round. You know, like I do have a couple of cashmere sweaters that I'm not going to be able to wear in the dead of winter or the dead of summer. And um, the same with like there's a pair of corduroy pants that I won't wear. But the corduroys and the cashmere will get worn, you know, most of the year. Um, I mean, our summers can be very hot, but they usually don't hit until June. Um, sometimes like late June, depending on the year. Uh, and then, you know, it starts to cool off again in early October usually. Um, so, you know, there's not, there's not a large amount of time where it's like thick a summer and really only thick a summer is like late July, August is when sometimes beginning of September when it's super, super hot. So there's like a month and a half in there where it's super, super hot. Um, so anyway, the idea behind these modules is that most of these items will last me most of the year. Again, I may want to substitute some little mini modules in to kind of mix and match with these, which is the beautiful, beauty, beauty of module dressing. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I want these to kind of go the long haul. So I decided doing two that are mostly neutrals would be very beneficial. So the first one is my light neutral, which is the one we're going to be discussing today. And I have three tops here, um, two that I've made and one that is actually um, store bought. It was a gift from Christmas. And I just want to remind you, you don't have to make all six of your pieces. If you have a, already a me made piece, piece in your wardrobe that you love to wear or ready to wear piece that you've purchased that you love the fit of, you love the colors or a thrifted piece. It doesn't really matter. I have all of the above. I have previously me made pieces, new me made pieces, thrifted pieces and purchased pieces. <laughs> Not purchased by me. It was a Christmas gift. One of these, um, but still purchased recently purchased purchases. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go through each of the three of these and kind of explain why I have chosen these to be 
in my module and then um, as I'm talking about them I'm gonna have up close of me just really more just to show you the top um, I don't want to give too much away with the bottoms and I want to wait and for the suspense as we get to the bottoms week um, but yeah let's get started all right so we'll start with my first this is a new make this is the Misty Cami by So Altered Style. Again, 20% off this pattern with the coupon code. So I did this in a silk charmeuse. Now this is the only piece in this module that is not an actual color of ivory. Obviously this is more of a um, goldy, camely kind of color, um, which is in my color palette. But I, I liked a little bit of richness and a little bit, the shininess with the, this is silk charmeuse, I wanted a little bit of that, um, a little shine, a little bling, I guess, um, without being too overtly blingy in this in this module. So I, because I chose a charmeuse, I did not want to use the facing that was available. If you've sewn with any fabric with any kind of sheen before, such as a sateen, um, like a cotton sateen or a satin or silk or polyester, you know that it shows every single lump and bump. It does not disguise things, it highlights things. <laughs> so I really did not want, I was afraid that the line for the um, facing would show. So what I did instead is I fully lined the top in this peachy um, crepe de chine silk. Also, these were both from my fabric haul from my mentor Joyce. So I mean, it goes in just like the facing. Um, I mean, it all tucks away nicely. You can't even see the peach, although the peach is kind of similar to my skin tone. So I thought if it does peek out, it won't be the end of the world. I kept it an inch shorter in the hem so that you're not going to see that poking out ever, but it just creates a nice um, line. Like there's not any, I mean, look, you can even see the wrinkles. Um, it just creates a nice line. And I really, really love the way, I mean, this is just going to be a good staple piece. So hopefully you've been seeing me in this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of my arms at this point in my life. Um, I'm starting to slowly um, put strength building back into my daily routine as my back is healing. It is feeling so much better today, by the way. I had a chiropractic appointment this morning and he was finally able to do a couple of adjustments. The injury is starting to heal enough that he could do some small adjustments and I feel so much better today. So things are definitely looking up, <laughs> but I've got to build my core strength back up. So just muscle tone in general. I turned 40 on Saturday and um, uh, there's just, yeah, I just need to take care of that muscle tone or I'm going to lose it. Okay, so why I chose, so I'm not crazy about my arms right now, but I think especially with a little bit of color on my arms, I, I will wear this no, without a topper on um, eventually. So yes, I love this top. Um, what do I have to say about it? The reason I chose it was because the V-neck. I love the V-neck. Um, for the most part, this um, strap covers my bra strap, although I'm trying to decide. This one may be a little thicker, the one I'm wearing, so you may actually see my bra strap a little bit because of the bra I'm wearing today, but I do have bras that don't. Um, but anyway, so it's a nice thick strap, usually covers my bra. Um, yeah, fully lined it in a silk crepe de chine. I have washed my silk and dried my silk before I sewed with it. So going forward, this top will go in the washing machine on a hand wash cycle, and then I'll probably air dry it. So um, I love having silk that's easy to take care of. Also, I tried sewing my darts in a different manner for this top. I don't know if you follow Lady Bird on Instagram or follow her blog, Lauren Taylor, but she had on Instagram a quick little tutorial on how she likes to sew her darts, and I think it's something that she learned in a class. But it just, I was like, that's interesting. And so I tried it. So basically she sews a dart like normal, and then when she gets right to the tip, not off of it, but right to the fold, she turns it back on it, her, itself and stitches right along the fold back into the dart bulk, about a half of an inch, and then back stitches. So the back stitch is, and I think Nancy Zeman will go off, or went off the dart, and then would come back into the body of the dart just to do the back stitch so then you have like a thread tail but this one just has you sewing all the way almost to the edge and then you turn back and go so all the way to the tip of the dart but you don't go off of it right at the fold and then you come back into the dart bulk about a half an inch and then back stitch there's no pucker now i do have some pressing um issues there but i was so especially in the charmeuse i was just very impressed with the um i need to press that a little better I tell you, Charmeuse just really, I mean, you put a wrong press in there, it's so hard to get back out. <laughs> um, so when I was pressing my dart bulk up, you press your dart bulk, dart bulk up on this top, 
you know, sometimes how um, at that seam or at that dart or whatever, it can kind of fold over on itself on the right side. So then when I went back to like press that open better, you know, you get, a, it's charmeuse. I just need to work on that a little bit more. But anyway, there would not be any kind of pucker whatsoever there if I had pressed that properly um, on either side. It's just a beautiful way to do a dart. Anyway, did that on both the lining and the top, and I love this. This is going to get so much wear, period, but it is a silk camisole. How do you go wrong? You don't go wrong with that. So that is top one for this module. And again, I chose it for the v-neck because, um, you know, it gives a little bit more, um, space here. I can't wait to wear it with my, um, Fulton sweater blazer. Is that right? Sweater blazer? The Fulton sweater blazer. Um, and with both my jeans and my, um, trousers. Trousers have not been sewn up yet. Maybe the Fulton sweater blazer has. It's actually a pretty quick sew considering it's a, you know, a blazer. All right, now we're going to go on to the store-bought top. This is a Land's End cashmere sweater in the uh, winter white ivory colorway. It is just the crew neck, um, long sleeve. This is a size medium petite, um, so like a 10-12, um, ready to wear. Uh, again, the petite because I am short everywhere, so I usually buy petite. I hardly ever buy ready to wear clothes, to be honest, unless I'm thrifting. So, um, but if I am for whatever reason or asking, you know, being gifted something, I love if there's a petite option. So here is my cashmere sweater. I picked this because, I mean, it is like a t-shirt, but it's cashmere. So you get all the warmth. It does help. It regulates your body temperature, basically, because it's a natural fiber. It's soft. So, um, I mean, I know some people that have wool allergies can't even wear cashmere. I have a little bit of wool sensitivity, but cashmere does not bother me. So I can wear this just fine um, on, like, a t-shirt, regular skin, no problem. My mom has issues um, and can't do cashmere even um, against her bare skin. But if you can, <laughs> they're a great um, layering piece. So I just really wanted a nice crew neck, um, but not too high, but a nice crew necked um, ivory cashmere sweater that I can literally mix and match with everything in my wardrobe. It's easy to layer underneath things. For layers, you can wear it by itself. You can throw on a scarf over it, um, which I am definitely, that piece of silk that I showed you last week in the color video, I think I'm definitely going to turn that into a scarf. Um, it's like, I don't know, a third of a yard of fabric, but I have the full width, so it's going to be a like a rectangle. <laughs> Enough I could put it in my hair, tie it tight around my neck, but I'm very excited. I mean, it's just a great base piece. So I decided to put this in mostly because of its versatility, and with this first module, I really wanted things to be able to be easily mixed and matched with the whole rest of my closet, and this definitely ticks all the bills. Um, they have sales on their cashmere all the time. I love Lands in cashmere. This is the third sweater that my mother-in-law has bought me for Christmas. Um, it's like my thing now. Every Christmas I get a different cashmere sweater. I got a bright blue cardigan one year, and then I got a real pretty, um, pale purpley lilac -y pink that has like a lace overlay, um, real roomy sweater as well. So anyway, um, I like this tradition that she has started. <laughs> but that's why I picked this, just because it's a great base layer, and really for most, um, seasons here in Indiana, I can wear this. Aside from the real, real heat, I'm pretty good to go. All right. And then for my final top, I need to button this up a little bit. You guys have seen this somewhat recently, but it is my silk twill uh, bond shirt. It needs to be ironed. I will iron it before I model it for you guys. So when you see me in it here in just a second, I will have ironed it. Um, but again, I wash and dry my silk in the water, wash and dry my silk yardage before I do anything with it. And then just in case something were to get thrown into the dryer. And then going forward, I wash things on a delicate cycle in the washing machine and then let them air dry. But that usually means that you get a wrinkly mess like this. So, um, I just need to iron it real quick, but I will before, <laughs> before you see it on me. Okay. So the Bond shirt. I love this so much. So technically, I have a short neck, and everything up here, everything on me is short, but I don't have a ton of space here. And while I do like a collar, and um, I definitely will not stop making collared things, a shorter collar stand, such as this has here, is actually really best on my neck, just because it doesn't take up as much space. But this top, again, has the nice V-neck before the buttons start here. Um, I, am I love this pattern so much. Again, it's, it's just stitch. Um, bond shirt, and it comes in cup sizes, which, I mean, they're a size 8, 
with a D or double D, depending on what my weight is at that, at that time when I make it, um, fits me perfectly. Like it just fits great in the shoulders. Um, I think I have to shorten the sleeves like an inch, inch and a half, but I have short arms along with everything else. But that's really the only adjustment I have to do. Now on dresses, I will take the hem up usually two inches, um, just because again, I'm only 5'2", but for that's like literally the only alterations I have to make to the itch to stitch patterns. I just really love them. But again, this is your classic white button down shirt. Um, again, this isn't white white, this is in like an ivory which is a better neutral for me. But yeah, I can wear this as the weather warms up very easily. Roll up the sleeves, pair it with shorts. This is year round very easily. Or because it's silk, it also helps to regulate the body temperature. So, um, just got lipstick on my hanger. <laughs> so, you know, as I, you know, want to layer it underneath things, actually even layering it underneath like the um, white sweater would be very doable because it's silk, it's thin. Um, I'm not, Sometimes with layering a shirt underneath a sweater, it gets a little too bulky on me because I'm so big busted. So it's definitely something I'd have to play with um, just to get the proportion correct and to make sure I wasn't like, whoa, boob. Um, <laughs> but the cashmere sweater is smooth. I do have to steer away from too much like texture, although this is a textured sweater. I thrifted textured sweater, sweater I've got on right now. But that just adds some added um, bulk to an area where I don't need any added bulk. But anyway, definitely easy to layer underneath cardigans, um, blazers, jackets. I mean, it's a button-down shirt. How do you go wrong? Um, it's got your standard, I've talked about this at, at length in my Bond shirt video. Um, but yeah, I've got, it's a Sew the Look video. I'll pop a link up to it right here if you're interested. <laughs> but I've got, um, it's got a, a hem, a, um, it's got a hem. Words are escaping me today. It's got a shirt tail hem that I used. My favorite way to finish that off is just with a piece of bias, and I just used the same fabric to make um, a bias facing. Um, but I just like the way that, you know, with a very curved hem like that, I just like the way that the bias works better. So yeah, those are my three tops for module one. So this is very exciting. Um, I am... Yes, I finished my tops for module two, so I had to think about that for a second. Um, and you'll be seeing that next week. I'm actually going to film that here in just a minute, too. So, yeah, and I got everything as I'm finishing it, um, including the fabric that's still waiting to be made up, hanging on my clothing rack right now. Also, I mean, it's just looking so good. I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and I am going to, at the end of these videos, show you, you know, okay, so far, here's the light module, and then um, next week when we add the color, I'm going to add those colored tops to it so you can kind of see it growing as we go along, which I think is just fun. So, <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. So anyway, that is, um, that's all for today. I even found, guys, I even found some red leather that's like a tomato red, um, like the color I'm using. A pretty good size skirt. It's a long skirt um, and a larger size, and I think I might be able to get my backpack purse out of that, my Huxley bag. I'm fingers crossed. I need to um, cut it up and see if I can fit all the pattern pieces on there, but I'm really hoping. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about these three modules. These are just really making me happy. <laughs> So I hope you guys are doing well and getting your tops made up as we go along. Um, don't forget to share it on the hashtag. I'm just really having a lot of fun seeing everyone's plans and seeing things as they start to materialize. All right, guys, that is all I've got for today. I will see you all on Friday with a little capsule wardrobe um, video. This is my, I'm um, going to be what I am going to take to Florida with me. So you guys are going to kind of help me pack. Um, but it's, you know, just basically using the module concept to pack for travel, which is just a genius way to, um, to pack when you're traveling because you can condense it quite a bit. <laughs> So anyway, that's what we've got on Friday. I was going to share kind of what I'm planning on taking on that vacation. And then Sunday, we've got our first Huxley bag video. Um, I have not filmed it yet, so I'm not really sure how far we're going to get. Definitely we'll be talking about materials and making sure you have all your stuff because um, there's quite a bit of like little odds and ends that go along with that pattern. I did buy the hardware kit. And then next Tuesday, we'll be talking about module number two's tops. Okay. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Friday, which is Valentine's Day. Bye-bye. <laughs>